Finally, when it comes to trust, no other industry comes even close to the outdoor adventure industry where trust in product and trust in brand is fundamental. Alan Coney is a veteran of the industry. He's chief marketing officer at Vibram, an 84-year-old storied brand that also works with other industry leaders such as Patagonia and North Face. And he's got some unique lessons on building and maintaining trust. So let's welcome Alan to the stage, set up a belay, and he can give us a mountaintop view of what building trust in brand really means. Thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me to St. Louis. I'm delighted to be here. Um, it is not a spelling error on my name. It is actually spelled A-L-L-O-N-C-O-H-N-E. And I keep telling everybody I spell it wrong when they try to spell it correctly. Um, I'm here to talk about Vibram, trust in brand and trust in branding, a little background about me. I started off wanting to be a, a professional skateboarder. I grew up in Salt Lake City. Um, and quickly found out I was probably better at uh, marketing. So I went into energy, I went into advertising in the ski industry, and now I'm in the outdoor industry. And uh, I work for Vibram. And typically after people meet me for the first time and we get my name squared away, then they ask me the, the other question about where I work, is it Vibram or is it Vibram? Because that's always the, the if you know the brand, the next question. And so. What I always say and what we always say at our company is yes, is the answer. Um, it's neither neither wrong or either either the way you'd like to say it. So um, typically the rule of thumb is we're an Italian company, we're based out of Europe, and so in Europe we say Vibram, and in, in the States we say Vibram. So who is Vibram? Um, it was founded, as Chris said, 84 years ago uh, by a man named Vitali Bermani. That's where we get the name Vibram. Um, and he was a mountaineer, he was an alpinist, and he loved the outdoors. He had a little uh, outdoor shop in Milan, and he would take people up into the mountains on expedition, and uh, just loved the outdoors, loved being outdoors, and like many brands in the outdoors, you start there, and, and your brand kind of, your company takes on the, the, the identity of, of where you are and what you do. In Vitaly's case, he would take people on expedition uh, into the Italian Alps, and um, tragedy actually struck. Uh, before uh, vulcanized rubber, what people would do when they would go into the, the Alps and walk on glacial ice and walk on uh, mud and snow is they would uh, go to a cobbler and a cobbler would take uh, your, your mountain footwear and they would, ha they would hammer in uh, hobnails. They would cobble hobnails, the wood nails, into your, into your footwear so you wouldn't slip and fall in the snow. Um, tragically, this uh, on a particular expedition, uh, Vitaly's friends actually perished. They slipped and fell and died. And so, like all good uh, outdoor leaders or innovators, he said, there's got to be a better way. So he went to Pirelli Tires and said, we've got to vulcanize rubber and make it the outsole for footwear, for people who want to go into the mountains, for people who want to do expeditions. Um, and so this is the famous Karamato sole. Karamato means tank tread. Um, we like to say there isn't a trail on earth that hasn't had a Vibram Karamato sole on it. It's, it's been around for 80 years. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. If you've ever seen a, a hike sign, it usually has this sole, and that's the design of the sole has stood the test of time. Uh, this is a picture of the Italian team that first summited uh, K2 in the Himalaya. Uh, this is the, the team from uh, that expedition that, that uh, accomplished that in, in 1954. So that's a little bit about Vibram, myself, but we want to talk today about trust in brand and trust in building brands. And there's a special kind of trust in the outdoor industry uh, when, you, when you're building equipment and when you're building brands because it's fundamental that uh, we deliver on, on the trust to the consumer of the equipment that we build, mainly because we're all in the, in the same uh, experience, whether it's outdoor travel or whether it's um, equipment, you can't have a negative experience. That ruins, you know, kind of the experience, and, it, and as we know, it, it compounds itself for uh, future consideration. Um, and in the outdoor industry, we're, we're exposed to the elements. On uh, footwear, we're exposed to slipping and falling, and with apparel, you're, you're exposed to the elements, whether it's rain or snow. 
Um, it can lead to ser serious injury. So, you know, this is voluntary. I want to go play in the outdoors. I want to uh, enjoy my experience and can happen serious injury or as we just talked about, death. So in the outdoor industry, um, you know, we're, we're kind of a large industry. We w I like to say we went mainstream in 2018 and because of uh, the, the, the documentary film that I'll talk about shortly, um, we're in 800, the outdoor industry did a, did a, a research project about you know, what, what does it mean to uh, the US economy and it's about 800 billion to the US economy. And that's anywhere from if you're on the side of a cliff using ropes and carabiners or if you're outside uh, fishing or if you have mosquito repellent, that entire economy is 800 billion. In mainstream, these brands, we talk about starting from you know, the, the, mid the mid 20th century, these brands have really built their equity and trust in building the kind of products and building the kind of services uh, that we all know going into the outdoors. So free solo. I want to talk a little bit about this because it has really shifted the paradigm. It's made climbing mainstream. It's made our industry mainstream. Um, and I'll, for those of you that have seen it, you'll, you'll see some of the clips here. For those of you that haven't, it's based around uh, one of the greatest climbers of, of the generation of all time, Alex Honnold. Um, free solo means climbing without ropes. So I'm going to do a little intro teaser to, to free solo. Does it feel different to be up there without a rope? It's obviously like much higher consequence. People who know a little bit about climbing, they're like, oh, he's totally safe. And then people who really know exactly what he's doing are freaked out. I've thought about all cap like for years and every yeah. year I'm like, that's really scary. That's really scary, to say the least. Um, really scary means that you're 3,000 feet up without a rope, and that's, if you look at the elevation of that, you're looking down at the Sears Tower. I want to focus on one segment of, of this uh, documentary film, because I think it's important when you talk about trust in brands, specifically how it relates to Vibram. Uh, the boulder problem, there's, a, there's you know, about 22, 2,300 feet up, there's a specific problem that Alex uh, encounters, and he's got to figure out how does he solve this last problem. There's two ways to get around it. Um, obviously, the consequences are dire. So when you think about this for a second, the only thing that Alex is relying on to get himself from 0 to 3,200 feet on top of El Cap is climbing rubber. He's, he's basically looking at these little crevices and nooks and crannies in rock, um, and he's using his hands and his fingers. Those are the only two products he's using, chalk and Vibram rubber. He's got to trust, and I think all climbers will tell you the, the, the product and um, the equipment that you use is, is paramount. Uh, so for us, this, uh, this expedition, this, this challenge that, that Alex encountered was important for us. So one way to solve the bouldering problem, I'll let Alex talk about it, but was two ways. And this was one way it's with ropes. Good. It makes more sense to do the big two-handed jump because you're jumping to a good edge, so there's actually something to catch. <sighs> but the idea of jumping without a rope seems completely outrageous. If you miss it, that's that. That's that. So let's not rely on hands. Let's rely on equipment. And let's rely on Vibram, La Sportiva, and trust. Just did the karate kick. He's 
got it. watching I mean you know you get clammy hands up here you get clammy hands just watching so um, that's the ultimate trust in brand we're we're you know super proud of everything this is obviously Academy Award winning documentary um, and this is our industry I mean Alex is beyond it but this is where our industry plays um, and we we in the outdoor industry we talk we we toggle back and forth about balance of stewardship and the balance of business um, and we firmly believe we've started the industry um, and we're growing exponentially, but we have, to, we, have, we have companies that believe firmly in how to build trust with the consumers and build a business and at the same time be good for the earth and the environment. And I think everybody knows Patagonia and, and their commitment to the outdoor industry, but also product in general. Their mantra, their, their mission statement is build the best product and do no harm uh, to, the, to the earth. And, and help that recreation atmosphere so that everybody can benefit from it. So uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the marketing uh, and, and how to build the trust in product. I'll start with Patagonia and go into a few others. Seemingly counterintuitive business model. Economics correspondent Paul Salman goes inside an American clothing company that has been growing rapidly while marketing itself as an anti-growth business. The company is always on message. As in a famous full-page New York Times ad, don't buy this jacket. It, it seems uh, oxymoronic. It certainly does. In fact, sales are booming, up 25 to 30 percent a year since that ad ran. So uh, I was working for a, a Polartech, who makes the fabric for Patagonia, when this ad ran. And it was great. In fact, when I was going over the presentation on the way here, I had this, this, uh, this slide up, and the guy next to me said, why shouldn't I buy that jacket? I said, do you know Patagonia? He's like, of course. And so this is the anti-capitalism for capitalism approach. And the idea of make the best product, make the best promise, and make sure people understand that. And don't vary from your message. Make sure people understand soundly what you stand for. And if you continue that, people will believe in you. It's the same thing with the North Face. Build the best product, have the best athletes on those products. Make sure that you deliver on that promise every day. Yeti cooler, who knew that we all needed new, really expensive coolers? But Yeti figured that out six years ago and said, we need a bomber cooler. We need the best, we need an indestructible cooler that's really expensive and they changed the paradigm. It was, um, it was rather rapid, if you think about how quickly Yeti has taken over. Part of our, our partnership in, in Boots, Danner Boots, a century-old company in lager uh, out of the Northwest using lager boots, make the best product. Um, our mantra is durability is, is sustainability. It can also be profitable because when, as you can see with whether it's Yeti, or Danner, um, you can be profitable. You can set the standard. You can set the, the highest bar. And collaboration is one of the great things that we uh, surround ourselves with in the outdoor industry. And here we have what we believe are, are three incredible brands. You have Danner, who makes the boot. You have Patagonia, the outdoor industry icon that believes in fly fishing and believes in, in building great product. And then you have Vibram, who believes in the outsole is where everything starts in footwear. And this project was uh, an example, I think, for the industry to recreate itself a little bit from the product where we started our, our ingenuity, our innovation. Uh, this boot came out this year, 2019, but the way it started was the highest level, the highest standard in boot that was on the market. And we were gonna double the price on that. We were gonna double the price on it, but we were gonna say, this is the last boot you're ever gonna buy because it's the best crafted it can be recrafted, and it's the best boot on the market because these three brands stand behind it. And because of the trust within these three brands, going back to the profitability, 
the, the forecast when this product came out this year has now quadrupled where it set this benchmark at. So I wanted to leave with one last slide because I think it's important. And I think we all in this room understand it. You know, apology accepted, trust denied. When, when we can all apologize and then you can kind of gain that, that trust back a little bit or people appreciate it. But the trust is eroded away when, when that promise is somewhat diminished. And so it's important to just keep that in mind with everything that we do or everything you do in, in, in offering a service or, or product um, that you, you always have that, that one shot to continue uh, and maintain and be impressed. And that's it.